Okay, so look. Now that I have this new tripod, I'm like, I can try new things. I can take my show on the road, right? So I'm here in my backyard. Look, I say I don't like nature, but like, that's my yard. I never go out there cause bugs. Anyway, look, it is time for lunchtime, true crime friends. And we need to talk about Miss J. Jakes. Do you know J. Jakes? She recently was on um, Court TV and I was fascinated by her case because it was so doggone crazy. So look, this is what happened. Jade's mama um, was married to Jade's father. They had Jade, whatever. Everything was fine and then they got divorced, fine. When Jade was a young teenager, like mm, 10, 12, 13, somewhere in there, Jade's mother married this dude, Mr. Merriman, and he basically became Jane's dad. Like she still had a relationship with her father, but her father lived out of the country, but her stepdad was basically her dad. When her parents got divorced, she was like, I love daddy. He's been around my whole life and I will take care of him. So she's taking care of this dude into his old age and he has a butterfly farm. Isn't that delightful? I never thought about where butterflies came from, but apparently they come from butterfly farms among other places. So anyway, this dude is sort of like a little bit old, a little bit drug addict-y, a little bit cranky, but that's okay. Jay lives next door and she's taking care of him. Okay, so fine. So she, he's in the hospital. He had a bad fall. He's in the hospital. He's getting better. And she's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clean up daddy's apartment. So when he comes home, he can have a nice clean place to stay. So she's cleaning and she's whatever. And she bumps his computer. And she's like, oh, and then the computer woke up. You know how computers will wake up sometimes. The screensaver was a picture of Jade naked in the shower. Oh my God. Jade sees this picture and she's just like, oh, I made a fire in the outdoor fireplace and now I'm dying from smoke inhalation. Anyway, so Jade sees this picture and she's like, what the what? And she's hysterical and she's devastated and she's but like, wait, maybe this is not me. Maybe it just looks like me. And so she starts looking through his computer and there are hundreds and hundreds of pictures of her on a carousel of her unclothed at various stages in her life and she freaks all the way out now listen the pictures were taken by jade and various boyfriends over the years but she had no idea that her dad knew they existed had seen them much less had made them a screensaver on her computer so she's very upset and she's like well obviously i have to unalive him in a public service homicide because nobody needs to be putting up with this kind of mess and honestly while we here at Gossip Room and Innuendo do not advocate unaliving people. In this case, I'm just, I, I, I can understand where her head was at. So anyway, so she's like, okay, how am I gonna, hmm, okay. So she hatches an evil plan and then she finds this dude. Do you, where do you find like a, a, a murder helper at, at, on Craigslist? I don't know where she found this dude, but she found this dude who was going to help her and he was a fixer. So she was like, okay, he's a fixer. He's going to fix things. And so they made this plan. She's like, look, he's going to come home and I'm going to unalive him and I'm going to make it look like an accident. I'm going to give him a bunch of drugs and then I'm going to smother him and choke him or whatever else. And, um, it's going to be fine. And so the dude is like, okay, so tell me when you pick him up from the hospital and then I'll drop by. And she was like, oh, okay, great. So she goes and she picks him up from the hospital and in the car according to her he's like i need drugs i need drugs where's my this where's my that she's like wait i have some ambient for you so she gives him a whole bunch of ambient and then she makes her first mistake she picks up her phone and she texts her friend the fixer i just dosed the hell out of him okay so this dude is like 180 pounds. He falls asleep in the front seat of her car. So she drives him home thinking, okay, I can just take him, put him in the bed and then I can smother him and then go on with my merry day. Only she can't move him because he's too heavy. And so she calls the fixer. She's like, hey, um, listen, I'm gonna need your help because now he's unconscious and I can't, like he, he's hard to move. And the fixer dude is not answering her calls and she's sending text messages and leaving messages, but she can't get any help. So she starts calling around to her friends and she calls a good friend. And listen, who doesn't have good friends? I don't know of any friend that, of mine that's good enough that would help me with a murder. But if I did, I would not mention them here on the nice YouTube. So anyway, so she calls this friend and she's like, hey, listen, um, I just unalived my stepfather and um, I need you to help me move his body from my car into the house. And her friend was like, yeah, I, that's going to be a no for me, dog. So finally, the fixer calls back and she's like, listen, I dosed him and he's starting to wake up, I think. So I'm going to need your help. And so he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, something came up. I can't make it. I'm going to send a substitute fixer. And so she was like, okay, great. So the substitute fixer shows up and as soon as he gets there, she says to him, listen, um, I'm going to need you to take him in the house and um, 
strangle him and then you could be on your merry way thanks and he's like right yeah no that that's gonna be a no for me dog and so she was like dang good help is so hard to find so fine so she's like okay I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna make him comfortable here in the car and then I'm gonna try and figure it out. So she goes in the house and she's pacing and she's hysterical. Now what happened next is under question. According to Jade, she's like, he was asleep. And so she went back to the hospital and she was like, um, he's here at the hospital, he's in my car. Oh, my neighbors are outside. He's here in the car and um, I can't get him out of the car. And so, um, can you help me? And they were like, ma'am, he has been discharged and COVID has happened, so we can't let him back in. And she was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So she says she took him home and she tucked him in, in the car and let him go to sleep, made him nice and comfortable. And then um, when she came back in the morning, he was dead. Mm, I doubt that version of that. So what the police were able to prove what happened, dogs, stop. What the police were able to prove is that he passed out from the medication that she gave him. And then she was like, okay, obviously I'm going to have to do this myself. So she put a plastic bag over his head and suffocated him, but that still did not kill him. So then she had to choke him and then he was dead. And then she was like, okay, good. I can finally rest and relax. And so she went in her house and had a good night's sleep. And then she got up in the morning. She's like, right, dead dude is still in my car. Um, how am I going to get him out? Nobody will help me. I know what I'm gonna do. So she takes his dead body, drives over to a local hospital and steals a wheelchair. Girl, what a Weekend at Bernie's. Did anybody see that movie, Weekend at Bernie's? This F is trying to go full Weekend at Bernie style. So anyway, so she puts the wheelchair in her car, just throws it on top of him because he's dead. What's he going to do, complain? And so with the wheelchair, she's able to get him out of her car and then just like throw him there in the driveway and pile a bunch of garbage on top of him and hope that the garbage people pick him up. I don't know what she thought was going to happen. Well, meanwhile, his friends were like, where is Tom? We have not seen him in a little bit. And Jade was like, I don't know what happened to him. And so people were looking and searching and looking all around and they were like, wait, what? Is that a foot in the garbage? I think I see a foot in the garbage. And so they find his body and Jay gets arrested and she's like, I accidentally, he overdosed himself on Ambien and then um, I was nervous. And so he fell out of the car into the driveway. And then, so I just left him there. And they were like, right, 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 right. What's this wheelchair that says Scripps Hospital? She's like, I went to the hospital to try and help move him, but I was scared. And they were like, wait, you were at the hospital with a dead body and you didn't drop it off? And she was like, yeah, because um, I have a really good reason for that. I'm trying to remember what the reason was. Oh, I didn't want people to think that I had unalived him. And so um, I was nervous because we had like a little bit of a contentious relationship. And the cops were like, right, 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 right. We're going to give you these nice pajamas and we're going to escort you over here to the nice um, prison where you're gonna have to stay until trial. So she stays locked up until trial. And she's like, if I can just explain this to the nice people um, on the jury, they will understand me completely. So she tells her story about, yes, she found the pictures and yes, she was very upset. And yes, she hired a fixer, but he was just gonna come over and help her talk to her father, not unalive her father. And all those other people are just lying on her. And yes, she went to the hospital and got the, um, got the wheelchair and stuff, but, um, she was just nervous. The jury was like, okay, we hear what you're saying, girl. Um, let's go deliberate. Only they deliberated for 15 minutes. One five. 15 minutes. And then they came back. They're like, okay. Uh, yeah, we're judge, we're ready. Can we can you can you validate my parking? Poor Jade was convicted. Now listen, the crazy thing is that the cops were saying. If she had just waited for him to go inside of his house and drug him up there, he would have died and everybody would have thought it was natural causes. Because here's the thing, I learned this today in this episode, and that is that if somebody is already asleep or compromised or very relaxed and you suffocate them, number one, it's easier to suffocate them. Okay, duly noted. But also if you strangle them, oh, when um, she wasn't sure if he was dead, she also strangled him. So to recap, she drugged him smothered him, strangled him, and threw him in the driveway. Jay girl, okay, she was nervous. She's not good at murder. So according to the prosecutor, if she would have just like um, put him in the bed and suffocated him, 
nobody ever would have known the difference. Um, 48 hours, I don't think you should be giving murder tips like this, but also duly noted in case you need to um, accidentally do a public service homicide because kind of this was a public service homicide. And then on the day of her sentencing, she was like, wait, I'm reminded now how he used to like nurture me and take care of me when I was a little girl. It turns out he was grooming me from the time I was a little girl to not notice that he was doing all kinds of nasty things and whatever. So um, poor Jade is in prison for the next 20 years. And I would write her a letter or put money on her books or something. But um, you know, I just bought a new hot water heater. I ain't got free money to be giving away to, you know, unalivers. So, um, Jay, I'm going to wish you all the luck in the world. And um, we're going to continue to play Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, And we're going to see where I will film a true crime video next. You have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.